Hi, I'm Chris from Theme Park to Table. We're cooking up delicious theme park recipes from all over the world here in my kitchen. Um, today we're working on Delish Loves Disney. We're going to be doing a recipe that comes from here and an extra bonus recipe as well. Um, the recipe we're doing from Delish Loves Disney is the Kungaloosh, which is actually a cake in this cookbook. Um, but when I hear the word Kungaloosh, I think of circa 19... 90s Adventurers Club and the drink that they used to serve there is a signature cocktail and as a bonus we'll also be mixing up one of those today to go with the dessert. Um, the cake can be found at the Jungle Navigation Company at Skipper's Canteen. Let's get started because this is a bit of a long recipe with quite a few steps in it. The first thing I've done is I've already started preheating my oven to 320 degrees so it'll be ready to go when we're ready. We're going to start off by grabbing a 9 by 13 cake pan and we are going to butter up the bottom and sides of this pan. So all I usually do is I just peel back the paper and then I just kind of rub the stick of butter right into the pan. Kind of gets messy. There isn't really a whole lot of way around that. Um, especially since I did leave my butter out to soften so it would actually rub on the pan. So we're just gonna get in there. We're going to get in all the corners, we're going to go up the sides of it. If there's any chunks that come off of butter, we're going to go back in just a second and we're going to smooth those all down. But the most important part about this is getting a nice full coverage on your entire pan because you don't want your cake to stick to the pan. So I'm just going to kind of get in there now, use my fingers, get a nice even coverage all over the whole pan, and then I'm going to wash my hands real quick. the pan is great, I'll butter it up, my hands not so much. Let me grab these. Okay. Now that our pan is ready and our oven is preheated, we're going to start by mixing up the cake. So, in the bowl of the mixing, mixing bowl from a stand mixer, I'm going to put in sugar, cocoa powder, all these have been pre-measured. If you're interested in the full recipe, I would highly recommend picking up the Delish Loves Disney magazine. We will put a description down below and a link for it. Powdered sugar, oh sorry, this is cake flour. And then salt. And then I'm just gonna give this a quick little whisk just to kind of help it along and get it a little bit mixed before I put the bowl back on the mixer. And then before we put it on the mixer, we're also going to put in a whole lot of butter. The butter is room temperature and I have chopped it up into kind of small pieces to help it incorporate in. Let's get all the little butter guys in there. Okay. And now we're going to bring this around to our mixer. We're going to get our paddle attachment on. Gonna lower it down. And then we're going to kind of start this off on low. We don't want to go too high too fast because it will cause a big poof of cocoa powder. I'm still going to get some that's going to kind of come out onto the counter. That happens every time I use this mixer. And what we're basically looking for here is that butter to get mixed in and kind of broken down and creamed into the dry ingredients. I'm going to try to increase the speed just a little. No, not blended quite enough yet. The recipe says that this usually takes about a minute. Um, I think it's going to take a little longer based on what I'm seeing right now. But we're just going to kind of let it go for a second, let it break down. Okay. Pick that up a little bit. It does look like it's starting to incorporate in a little bit, so I'm going to add in milk to kind of help it along.
and then we're gonna mix in some vanilla. And then slowly we're gonna add in some eggs. One more to go. I'm going to pick that up just a little higher. To make sure everything is, make sure everything's really well incorporated. I'm going to take a look at this and see how it looks, see if it looks blended. I'm gonna let it go just a little bit longer, I think. And I'm gonna grab something to kind of scrape it down with. The recipe does say not to over mix it, but to mix it until it's fully incorporated. And I'm still seeing some areas that are definitely wetter than others. So let's get that locked and loaded. And I'll just let it Okay, I'm gonna call that just mixed. So we're gonna get this off of the paddle. This seems to me like a very thick cake, re cake mix. I've never actually made this recipe before, um, but for most cake batters that I have baked, this one definitely seems thicker than most. It kind of reminds me of more of a brownie batter than a cake batter. Get most of this off. As you can see, it's very, very stuck on, kind of very cementy. Okay. We'll get that in the sink. We'll grab this. We'll pull it back around. And then we'll just kind of give this a scrape. And in the bowl, it's kind of into the pan, it's going to go. Okay. I can tell you with the chocolate, the cocoa powder in it, it smells amazing. It's very, very chocolatey. Um, and like I said before, very thick. I'm hoping that this is the way it's supposed to be. But I guess only time will tell. Okay. Grab one more scraper. Because I'm having a hard time wrestling this out of the bowl. This is not scraping up nice for me. Now we need to spread this out into the pan so it's even. I think the question, the real question for this recipe is how much this chocolate is going to be on me before I get this cake in the oven. So I'm telling you right now, I can see cocoa powder every place I've been. So let's get that. As even as we can. And then we'll give this a little scrape. And then we're gonna get this in the oven. This needs to go in the oven for, it says 24 to 25 minutes. My oven tends to bake things a little faster. So I'm actually gonna start at about 22 and then I'll check it. I just can't leave that, sorry. There we go. So we're gonna put this in, right in the center. And 
gonna just move this out of the way. Let's get this going for twenty two minutes. And then we're gonna move on to the next step. Once I decoco pot myself just a smidge. Okay. The next part of the recipe we're gonna work on is actually a chocolate tool, which is gonna be baked kind of like a cookie in a single sheet that then you're gonna, we're gonna kind of crack apart and we're gonna use it for a garnish. So that's gonna be the next step in this. So right over here on the stove, I have butter already in the pan. I'm gonna turn this on to about a medium heat and then into the butter. I am going to add sugar, corn syrup, milk, vanilla, and salt. Now this, we're just gonna kinda mix together. We need the butter to melt. We need the ingredients to combine. And we need this to come to uh, simmer for about a minute. So let's get this all going together. more heat to get that burner on. So let's get this all mixed together. So of all the recipes we've made so far on this channel, this recipe is the first one that I've actually had at a Disney park. I have had this at the Jungle Navigation Company. I have had the dessert and it is amazing. Um, and I actually had a conversation with the waiter when we were there about the dessert versus the drink because when I saw Kungaloosh, my first thought was the drink at the Adventurers Club. <laughs> I didn't even know that they had repurposed it into a dessert at that point. Um, the dessert is very delicious. I still think the drink is better. Um, maybe it's just the Adventurers Club atmosphere I like so much. Um, leave in the comments if you ever had a chance to actually go to the Adventurers Club and have the drink there. It's one of the clubs I really, really do miss from the old Pleasure Island at downtown Disney. This is almost all melted. getting there. So. Let's get this all melted down. Okay. And now we're just going to let this be until it comes to a simmer when we have to stir it for about a minute to let it cook down. Once it, once it comes to a simmer, we're gonna add into it um, cocoa nibs. Once again, I had to Google what exactly a cocoa nib was. Um, cocoa nibs are actually the seeds that come out of the cocoa pod that they make chocolate of, except for they the husks are off and they're chopped up. They're kind of hard. Um, I don't think they're gonna melt down. They're actually, like when you chew them, it's kind of like a consistency of like a chocolate sunflower seed almost. Very deep chocolate flavor, unsweetened, but those get mixed into this afterwards and then it gets baked into a cookie. So I think that the idea is for it to be kind of like a, a cookie that has like hunks of actual cocoa nibs in it. Let's see. I'd say we're real close to that simmer. So we're gonna give this a stir we're gonna give it about a minute. Then we're gonna get the cocoa nibs in and we're gonna set this off to the side to cool for a little while. It has to cool down before we can spread it and bake it. So let's get this going. I'm actually watching my kitchen timer in case you were wondering how I was figuring out what a minute was. I'm watching our cake countdown.
This very much reminds me of the base that you would use to make fudge almost before you would add the marshmallows and the chocolate in. Has kind of a similar smell to it too. Like a sweet and condensed milk kind of smell. just about 15 seconds away. And then we're gonna turn off our heat. We're gonna add our cocoa nibs in. Those mixed in. Right in. Okay. And now we're gonna move it to the side and just let it cool. I'm actually gonna pull it off just a little further because the heat that's coming from the stove that's baking the cake is gonna take that, make that take a little longer. So we're gonna actually get it off the top of the stove so it cools a little bit quicker. Okay, so we've got our cake baking, we have our cookie going. So while we're waiting for the cake to bake and that to cool a little bit, we're gonna make our drink. So I'm gonna grab my little fish tank container, which I actually got from a restaurant called The Summer Shack. They were nice enough to let me have one specifically to make this drink in. Cause I thought it was a really neat container. Now, typically, if you're watching other videos, you know that I don't do exact measurements on screen. I don't give away the recipes. I want you to actually look at, the, purchase the magazine that they come from. But for this, the recipe I'm using is a general use recipe. So I'm gonna give measurements. I'm gonna mix it up as we go. So we need, I use Smirnoff Vodka, Malibu Rum, Midori, which is a melon liqueur, cranberry juice, and pineapple juice. Now the recipe I'm using is from circa 1992. There, was, there is another Congolish recipe out there from the early 2000s that uses strawberry daiquiri mix as the base um, instead of what I'm using, and that one is actually made frozen. This is the one I know and remember and love, so this is the one I decide to make. Just get the pineapple juice open. I'm also making the drink to fit in this cup, which I will be sharing, I will not be drinking alone, because um, <laughs> it is gonna be a big drink. Um, so I am using five times the recipe. So what you see me putting in here is actually meant for five drinks, not one. We're gonna start off with six and a quarter ounces of vodka. our six and there's our quarter now if I was making something that wasn't a drink that was all going in together I would be washing my measuring cups in between but since all this stuff is going into one cup anyway I'm just gonna go with it then we're using six and a quarter ounces of the Malibu rum three and three quarter ounces of the Midori. One day I'm remember to open all these things before off camera because I always struggle with seals and such. Okay, almost, I think, I hope. Okay. So that's gonna be three and three quarters. So that's 
two. And that's one and three quarters. Okay. And then next we're gonna go to the pineapple juice, which we're adding in five ounces of pineapple juice. put in five ounces of pineapple juice and then the recipe calls for a splash of cranberry juice and a splash in bartending terms is actually one-fifth of an ounce so we're going to use one ounce of cranberry juice in this Pretty much looks the way I remember looking. I'm gonna grab a straw and give it a stir and then I'm gonna set this aside and later before we share I'm going to put some ice in it, maybe a couple of Swedish fish to swim around a little fish bowl and an extra straw to share this because like I said I would not be able to drink this whole thing by myself. So there is what I would consider the original Kongaloosh. Just move this stuff back out of the way. And we'll check and see. We'll check and see how our stuff is cooling and where we're at. Let's get that in the sink. Okay. That's looking pretty good. I'd say it has probably a few more minutes to cool, but not too bad. It's definitely thickening up. We're gonna take a quick peek at our cake and see how that's looking. That's looking very thick and chocolatey and good. And since I think we have probably about 10 minutes before the next step, we are gonna just take a little pause right here. I'm gonna clean up some of the dishes and then I'll see you back here in about 10. Welcome back. Um, so while you're gone, what you missed was I did some dishes, I put the mixer away. I checked on the cake a couple of times and I think I'm ready to check on it again. Um, at this point, it's actually taken about 40 minutes to cook all the way through. Yeah, that's done. And the top, the top part of the time was 25, um, but it did take about 40 minutes in my oven. It is a new pan that I'm using, so maybe that's added a little bit to it, but it did take a little bit longer than I was expecting. What we're gonna do next is we're going to bump the oven temperature to 350 degrees. Which will go probably really quick with my oven. It tends to heat up pretty fast. We're gonna grab our half sheet pan and the chocolate tool mix that we made earlier. It definitely has cooled down. It's thickened up. And I'm gonna grab a spatula so that we can scrape this out onto the pan and then spread it kind of thin. And then it's gonna go into the oven and it's gonna bake for 10 minutes. So let's get this started on here. Okay. I'm not sure when this bakes, if it's gonna spread or thin or what it's gonna do. It did say to use a half sheet pan, which is what I'm using. The pan does appear to be oversized. Um, for what I'd be expecting, but we'll give it a shot and see what happens. Okay, so that's, that's pretty well spread out. Let's get the little polka nibs off the spatula. Set into the sink. 
And then we are gonna put this in the oven for 10 minutes. I did hear my oven tick behind me, which means it's probably a temperature now. So. I'll slide. And we're gonna set our timer for 10 minutes. We're gonna let that cook. While we're letting that cook, we're going to, I'm gonna grab a drink of water and we're gonna start making our Chantilly cream. Okay, so over here behind me, because my mixer won't reach this table, unfortunately. I have some heavy cream in my mixing bowl. The bowl and the cream are both in the refrigerator. I find that if you make whipped cream in a chilled bowl, it actually whips up better. For this recipe, we're going for soft peaks. So kind of when it will hold its shape, but not real stiff is what we're looking for. Um, I'm probably not gonna really talk much while I'm doing this because my hand mixer is a little on the noisy side. So we're gonna take powdered sugar. We're gonna put the powdered sugar in. Sticking to the bowl a little bit. It is a wee bit humid in here right now. And some vanilla. We're gonna grab our mixer. I'm gonna start off kind of on a lower speed and as it thickens, I'm gonna go a little higher. Say those are some good soft peaks right there. So we're gonna stop there. I'm gonna bang these off real quick. And then I'm gonna hand the bowl to my magic off camera hands just to get back in the refrigerator so it stays chilled while we continue working. The next thing we're gonna work on is, as for another part of the garnish on this, is a coffee dust powder. Once again, we're gonna have to go behind me because my grinder is not long enough to reach out here. I already measured the ingredients and put them in here. What we have in here is we have granulated sugar, cinnamon, and already ground coffee. And it just says to mix it up until it makes a finer powder. So that's what we're gonna do. Let me show you what it looks like first. I haven't mixed it at all, so it's kind of just in layers right now. And then, this guy's much quieter so we're just going to kind of pulse it so it's all powdery okay let's see how that looks i say that looks pretty powdery to me here let's pour it out in here i think it'll be easier to work with in here anyway and that's a pretty powdery mixture right there Now, I'm going to use a spoon because this is just in confectioner sugar, which is pretty much what we just made. Because when you pulse up granulated sugar, it makes confectioner sugar. So, while we're waiting on that guy to keep going, we're going to get um, the bananas prepped for their part in the project. So, as part of this, on top of this dessert is also some caramelized bananas. 
So we're going to take three bananas and some sugar and a cutting board. And we're going to cut each banana into quarters. So we're going to go half and then half again. So I will show you what I mean. Let's get these guys ready to go. These are going to go underneath the broiler when the tools are done baking. We'll bump the oven up to broil. And these will just go under. We'll leave the door open. It won't take very long. We just want to caramelize the sugar that we're going to put on top of the bananas. So get the little strings off. So we're just going to cut them in half this way and then in half this way. And then we're just going to lay them on the baking sheet. The bananas might get a little brown while they wait for us, but they're going to be caramelized anyway. So in the end, the brown's not going to really matter. The last one. I'm going to cut off the end of that guy. Not right there. And then you could also use a brulee torch for this part if you have one. Instead of the brulee of your oven, whichever way you prefer. I'm going to wash my hands so I do have some banana on me. Maybe a quick rinse. And we're just going to take some sugar and we're just going to sprinkle sugar on top. I did decide to line my baking sheet with foil just in case I get sugar everywhere, which I'm sure I will. So I'm not trying to clean caramelized sugar off of my baking pan. If you've worked with sugar and you've dealt with burnt or caramelized sugar, you know what a pain it is to clean up. So we're just going to give those a sprinkle of sugar. I'll probably hit them with one more sprinkle before I put them in. The recipe did call for quite a bit of sugar. I measured a little extra in here so I could scoop it, but I'm thinking that this is supposed to be quite thick. So we're going to go back and just kind of add a little bit more to them. I want to make sure they get nice and caramelized in the oven. Okay. And a little more for this guy over here. So that looks like it's got about two and a half minutes left. Let's take a peek at it and see how it's looking. So it definitely has spread out a lot. And I'm not really sure what it's supposed to look like when it's done. But here's hoping that that's what it's supposed to look like. I am starting to smell the sugar in that kind of cooking down a little bit. And I want to make sure we keep an eye on that over the next couple of minutes because I'm afraid it's going to burn if we don't. I know with sugar we have to make sure we get it to the right temperature. Otherwise it's not going to crack for us when we try to break it apart. Um, but at the same time, I also don't want it to burn. So I think we're just going to kind of keep an eye on this for the next minute or so and see how it looks. And then we'll get the pan turned up to broil. Um, let me grab a couple of these guys because that pan is going to be coming out of there real hot. And let's see how it's doing. I'm going to actually pull it out and just kind of take a look at it. I'm going to leave it for the last minute and see how it looks. So once once this finishes, we're gonna turn our oven up to broil. We're gonna get our bananas in, and then we're gonna start assembling the final product. We're almost there. We're on the home stretch. <laughs> if you made it this long, thank you. <laughs> okay, let's feel this while we're waiting. Feels almost cool. It doesn't say how long the cake has to cool before, before you can cut it, so. 
I'm hoping it's not one of those cakes that's supposed to be absolutely stone cold before we cut it, but we're gonna give it a shot when everything else is ready. I think it'll be okay. And we got about 27 seconds and we're gonna pull this out. Okay, so I'm going to say that this is probably, probably done. So that's what it looks like. The sugar definitely got thinner and it definitely spread a bit. That's our kitchen timer. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to turn off the oven. We're going to go to broil. We're going to hit start. We're going to get that just a minute to heat up and then we're going to get our bananas in there. I just want to see if I can get this mat a little bit flatter because it kind of bubbled up in the oven I don't really want this stuff running off of it if I can stop it <laughs> I'm not really sure I can stop it though okay well I guess we're just gonna let it be and it's gonna be what it is because I don't want to burn myself either on that okay let's grab our bananas and we're going to put them in here. And we're just going to kind of, we're going to leave that crack just a little bit. So you can keep an eye on them. I'm going to move, I'm going to grab our cake. And I'm going to move our cake over here to get it ready. And I'm going to grab Spatula. So you can try to cut it and scoop it with the same thing. And our coffee powder. We're gonna want that. And our dish. And then I'm gonna move the sugar out of the way. So we're done with that for right now. And then I'm gonna have our I'm gonna have our magic hands grab me the whipped cream out of the refrigerator and we actually have some ice cream also in the freezer um at the restaurant they serve it with a uh, caramel nut type ice cream i don't have access to that so i went with a salted caramel ice cream from we have a local place nearby called batch ice cream and their stuff is absolutely amazing so i decided that, that would be a good counterpart for this cake and it's all natural ingredients so i figured that would balance well so let's just keep an eye on these guys. Yeah, they're looking pretty good. So let's see if we can. That yeah, still feels a little bit warm. I'll give that just a second. Starting to see the sugar starting to melt on the bananas. That's kind of what we want to see. Let me open it so you guys can kind of get a peek in there while we wait. I think once, I think once the bananas kind of have, are doing their thing and we'll wait for everything to cool, we're going to kind of cut away again. So you don't have to just sit here. When the bananas are caramelized, I'll pull them out and I'll just set them aside for you. We'll meet back here in just a few minutes. And we're back. So the bananas have finished caramelizing. This is what they look like now that they're all done. The tool, I'm afraid, is a failure. Um, it's supposed to be able to break and crack, and I'm thinking maybe I should have left it in the oven a little while longer because it's not its not what I would consider a crack consistency. It's more of a soft candy consistency. There's one piece off the side here that is a little bit <laughs> more brittle that we might try to put on the dessert just so it's on there, but this overall I think is probably not worked out the way it was supposed to and probably should have left in the oven a little while longer. Um, I pulled it when I did because I could actually start to smell the sugar. I smelled the sugar was starting to burn and I got nervous. Um, so maybe another minute or so probably would have been better for it. But let's get everything dished up and put it together. I'm just going to grab some chocolate syrup for this too. Okay. So the cake is still a little bit warm. So I'm going to hope I can actually get some of this out of the pan. So let's grab a piece of the cake. There it is. Okay. There's a piece of the cake. I'm actually just going to move the cake out of the way. So 
you can see what else is happening over here. And then we're going to take some of the chocolate syrup and we're just going to give this a little drizzle of chocolate syrup. A little sprinkle of our coffee powder. And we're going to put a dollop of whipped cream over on this side. A scoop of our ice cream. Over on this side. Get on there. And then we're going to grab one of our caramelized bananas. It's a little stuck in the tray, but not too bad. And, oh, I was excited to get on there. I'm gonna put the banana on there. And we're gonna grab a little piece of this. The only piece that is hard in the entire thing. And we're gonna put it on there. And there we have the Kungaloosh cake style and the Kungaloosh drink style. Now, unfortunately, not all the recipes that I try to make being my first time making will be a success. This might be something that I come back to later and see if I can get that tool right later on um, because that's gonna bother me. But if you stuck with this entire video, thank you. If you liked it, hit like and hit subscribe and Hope to see you here next time.